Hey, what's going on everyone? It's Justin here and welcome to the full comparison between two Korean rivals, the Samsung Galaxy S5 and the new LG G3. Both of which were released by LG and Samsung as their flagship for 2014 released in the first half of the year. Of course, they are both flagship smartphones and they do come with the specs that you would typically expect. They are powered by a Snapdragon 801 processor clocked in at 2.5GHz and quad core of course. The S5 having 2 gigs of RAM and the LG G3 having 3 gigs of RAM in the typical US variant. So the first thing we are going to look at is the hardware and both these devices are made out of plastic. On the Samsung Galaxy S5 you kind of have a pixel dot design going throughout the back and a lot of people have found this really undesirable both in the looks and the feel. On the other hand, the LG G3 is often mistaken to be made out of metal, however it is plastic and in general I actually really enjoy the feeling of it as it really cuts down on the weight while giving you the metal look and I think that it feels extremely solid as opposed to the S5 which often does feel a little bit hollow as I would like to describe it. When comparing the height and the weight, the S5 comes in at 142mm while the LG G3 comes in at 146mm. When it comes to the weight though, these devices are pretty much identical with the S5 weighing in at 145 and the G3 at 149. Taking a look at the thickness, the LG G3 measures in slightly thicker at 8.9mm thick and the S5 at 8.1. On the bottom of these devices you will also notice a micro USB port for charging and syncing and on the G3 you also have the headphone jack located there as well. The S5 has a wider port as it does support micro USB 3.0 if you do have the appropriate cables and the reason for the port cover is that the S5 is IP67 rated for water and dust resistance. So that is definitely something to consider. Both these devices also have removable backs with the LG G3 featuring a 3000 mAh battery and also an SD card slot expandable to 128GB. The Samsung Galaxy S5 similarly has a 2800mAh removable battery and an SD card slot also expandable up to 128GB. On the S5's home button you also have a fingerprint sensor and that allows you to unlock your device of course but in my opinion I found it kind of hard to use and it is something that I didn't really use at all but for some people it may be very useful. One thing you will notice that is kind of unusual that no other company does is on the LG G3 you do have your buttons including your power and volume buttons located right below the camera on the back. This allows the device to be extremely seamless going around the edges and in my opinion they did a very good job executing that. On the Samsung Galaxy S5 you have the buttons located where you are normally used to them and the volume rockers are on the left side and the power button on the right side. They are pretty well placed and I also don't have any problem with that as well. And below the camera you will also notice a heart rate sensor. So now moving on to the display, this is definitely a category that the LG G3 is very excited to be in. It features a quad HD display which is something that a lot of people have been talking about with a resolution of 2560 by 1440 packed into a 5.5 inch display. On the other hand, the Samsung Galaxy S5 still has a very great 1920 by 1080 resolution Super AMOLED Full HD display. It is very clear and vibrant as you can see and it comes in at 5.1 inches so it is relatively smaller than the LG G3 although the form factor is actually pretty similar. And that is mostly thanks to LG's design in terms of retaining a very thin bezel and also a small chin throughout the top and the bottom. So taking a closer look at the display of the LG G3, you will notice that the 534 PPI really, really shines. It is just so clear and especially in its menus and everything, it is just so beautiful to look at. And that is to be expected out of a 2560 by 1440 resolution display. But the thing is, almost every app today isn't exactly optimized for a screen of that resolution, so you really won't notice a huge difference until the market continues to adapt to a Quad HD display, which hopefully will happen by next year. But nevertheless, the display is extremely nice to look at, and especially if you're on your menus, and what LG has done with their skin, I really love the Quad HD display and is definitely a great feature of the LG G3. A 1080p full HD display like seen on the S5 is definitely still very very good as that is what's seen on most flagship smartphones today and I definitely feel that the market will be moving over to the Quad HD by about next year. And especially with the full HD Super AMOLED display seen on Samsung devices, the colors really do pop out and are extremely vibrant. 
So now taking a look at a photo on both of these displays, you will see that they are both absolutely stunning. They have great viewing angles and I have to say that if you're viewing a high resolution image on a Quad HD display, it definitely shines in those remarks. And in general, I have to say that the LG G3 definitely had a great representation in terms of its color and so did the S5, although you should expect it to have a little bit more of a saturated color tone as known with Samsung screens in the past. And some people actually really like that as it allows the colors to really pop out of the display, especially the reds, the orange and blues and everything. But in general, I have to say that you won't be disappointed with either of these display, but you will definitely be wowed by the pixel resolution of the quality HD display on the LG G3, which is one of its major selling points. So now that we've talked about the hardware, let's move over to the software for a bit. Both these devices do run Android 4.4.2 KitKat, with the S5 having a TouchWiz UI skin, while the LG G3 having an Optimus UI. And I'm going to tell you straight up, both these companies had a different approach coming into the software and both functionally and visually will bring a huge difference for the users. So that should definitely be something you consider when deciding between these two devices. So the first thing we're going to look at is the LG G3. And I'm going to tell you that from the predecessor, the LG G2, one of the things I hated the most was the software. It was relatively intrusive visually it wasn't really appealing and I feel that this year that they have done a very good job in overhauling that for the LG G3. The icons are nice and flat they look very nice on this 2560 by 1440 resolution display and giving you guys a really quick tour by holding on the home button it will take you to Google now pretty much seen on every phone and you also have the menu to view your running apps. There's just a look at your app drawer and your widgets are also located along the top. And I think that in terms of the way it is to get around, they've made it very easy. And so far, I'm really enjoying my experience on the LG G3. So you can search for apps. And I also want to note that I really like the keyboard on the LG G3. There's a look at our running apps and you can also close them all at once. So nothing really new there. And um, as you'd expect, it is extremely snappy and by holding on the home screen, it will allow you to very easily add apps to your home screen. And that is kind of the approach that I've always wanted LG to have and they have finally brought it to the G3. When it comes to the notification screen, it kind of looks pretty similar to what we saw last year. But again, I think they have made some necessary changes to make it much more enjoyable. You have your quick access things and toggles on the top like we will see on the S5. You can also edit those and format them around. You can also have Q-Slide on or off with some of these stock apps and you also have brightness and audio control. And the settings button is on the top. You can also format the settings menu to the way you like it, whether it is in tab view or the list view as you can see here. And like I said, I think they've done a very good job in the visual aspect of it. And there's just a look at the knock, pretty much double tap to sleep and also double tap to wake. And that is kind of to compensate as if you had your device on your table, for example, and your buttons on the back, it makes it much more convenient to turn your device on and off. And there's also the knock code you can use. When it comes to the camera app, I think this has quickly become one of my favorite. They have kept it very clean, allowing you to hide all the settings and just tap on the screen to take a picture, or you can have those on and have some basic settings, but it really isn't too busy to the point where it's just too much for an individual to handle. And the laser autofocus is something that I think is very good that LG has done and that we haven't seen before. So that was just a look at the LG G3 and the Optimus UI. So moving on to Samsung, you will notice a pretty big difference both in the functionality and kind of the visual aspect of the TouchWiz UI. And to be honest, I've never been the biggest fan of TouchWiz. So taking a look at the menu, it is extremely snappy as you would expect. And we're just taking a look at the app drawer there and they give you a whole bunch of options, which is always great. And obviously with Android and in TouchWiz, you will notice a lot of customizability, which is what a lot of users do like. You can add your apps, your widgets, as usual, add different windows, and also access home screen settings. By holding on the home button, it will take you directly to Google now, like we saw the same on the LG G3. And by holding on the back button for a few seconds, you can go into your multitasking menus, which I will show you later. There's also your quick access apps, and you can also close them all at once. And Samsung also has something called My Magazine, which is a way of displaying the news similar to what we saw on Sense UI. And you can also disable this if you really do not like it. 
This allows you to add your social networks, different topics, and what you would like displayed in that menu. And sliding down to notifications, one thing I've been a fan of in Samsung is the notification tab. You have all of your quick access settings along the top. You can also edit those and reformat them to the ones you use the most or the ones you like. And in terms of the notifications, aside from a visual difference, it is actually pretty similar to LG skin when you think about it. Going to the settings, they have also changed it up in the S5 to make it much more visually appealing in kind of a rounded, flat layout, and you can either have that in a tab view or in a list view. So I think that they've done a good job in the visual side of the settings tab that we have seen on the S5. When it comes to multitasking, the LG G3 also has something similar like this, which is a multi-window to kind of take advantage of screen real estate. It allows you to run two apps on a time on the screen and kind of rescale them. But to be honest, it is something that I never really found myself using on the S5, but more on the Galaxy Note 3. Going into the lock screen, as you know on the S5, you do have the option to use a fingerprint sensor, but the fingerprint sensor isn't the way it would work on, for example, the iPhone 5S, where you just hold your hand along the sensor. But instead, you do have to slide it down from a portion of the screen through to the button. So for some people, it would still be very useful, but for me at least, I kind of prefer using a passcode lock or no lock at all. Now onto the camera, Samsung has always been known to have tons and tons of different modes. They also have the grid view to have all of your settings and they're actually very easily accessible and you can change them or add them to your quick menu where you have three slots. You can also very easily switch to the front facing camera, add a grid, and you also have your different modes if you would like to use that. As you know, Samsung is known to have very, very many as opposed to we saw on LG. But that was pretty much a look at TouchWiz UI, and for some people they really really like it, but I have to say it really isn't for everyone. So now on to a very exciting part of this comparison, and that is the camera. The Samsung Galaxy S5 features a 16 megapixel sensor, while the LG G3 features a 13 megapixel sensor. On the front however, the S5 features a 2 megapixel front facing camera, while the LG G3 has a 2.1 megapixel camera. And of course, both of these will be able to record 4K video. So before I jump into the camera test, I want to walk you through the UI. So in the Samsung UI, you do have tons of options. As you can see, they're listed out in the grid. You could set the quality, the location, and for some people, they actually really like that, while others would just prefer simplicity. So moving on with that, you can also just very easily switch the cameras, and you also have three different slots going along the left side that allow you to add what you may want to as to which settings you actually access most. On the right side, you also have your choices of modes, and I do remember on the the S4 there is way more modes, like way too many to even remember, and you do also have the option to download some. The autofocus on the S5 is also extremely fast, Samsung claims it to be 0.3 seconds. But now we're also going to move into the gallery and take a look at the interface as to how you can tweak your images after you take the actual pictures. So there's your settings in terms of sharing it, and in terms of post-processing you have options in the adjustment, the tone, the effect, and also for portraits, and they definitely give you tons of options. You can change the saturation, contrast, stuff like that. You can also add some different filters, draw on it, and have some fun with that. So I think they definitely give you more than enough that you would need to tweak your images and kind of make it your own after you take the actual picture. On the LG G3, however, you do have a much simpler interface and what I would call a little bit more traditional. You can hide all these settings and even the shutter button and just tap on the screen to start taking pictures or you can just have the settings there and use them if you need to. You go to your settings there and there's just some stuff like the grid, the timer, just some very typical things and some of your modes such as panorama, a lot of which are what you would pretty much expect. As to Samsung having much more unique features in the modes that you may or may not use. Like I said, this does also record 4K video and it also has a really cool selfie mode that you may have seen in a few demonstrations. Going into the effects, it is a little bit different in terms of accessing it on the LG G3, but it still gives you a ton of options. You see there's the sharing options, but Going into the editing options, you can see you go there and it would take you to a new menu, Photos. 
which is the Google's Photos browser, and it actually gives you quite a bit of options. The interface is very nice, and it gives you all the typical things that you may want or maybe looking for. So I'm not really gonna go into detail. There's just so much to look at here. There's your ton of filters, there's 15 choices. You can change up the tone, scale, crop, rotate, and all the typical things like that. So now taking a look at the cameras, I will say that you can't go wrong with either. They're both able to capture a great amount of detail, and in some pictures the G3 did a little bit of a better job, and in others the S5 was able to handle the colors a little bit better. On the S5 you are going to get a little bit more of a saturated color as we are known to see on Samsung's cameras, but even in a few pictures you will notice here it is very hard to tell the difference in both of them. But I will say that if I was to pick the better one, the S5 does have a very slight edge. Now looking at the video, I will tell you that you almost cannot notice a difference side by side. Um, if you were to point out the smallest things, I would say that the LG G3 was able to handle things a little bit better on the fountain at least, but that is really just nitpicking. You also notice that the kind of crop factor on the LG G3 is also a little bit bigger as the fountain is zoomed in a little bit more, and these were taken from the same distance. But on this shot, however, you will notice that in the trees, I found that the colors on the S5 did look a little bit better. So in the end, I gotta say that both of these cameras do a great job and are actually very close in its quality and you will really notice a small, small difference. However, the LG G3 does have optical image stabilization if that is important to you. So now moving on to the battery life, the LG G3 features a 3000 mAh removable battery while the S5 features a 2800 mAh removable battery. And I can simply assure you that with both of these devices you can get through a day if not into your second day without a problem. So on the LG G3 I've had it for about 3 days now and I will say with confidence that it was able to get it through a day even on heavy use and despite the fact that it has to power its extra pixels I was very impressed by the battery life and I never had a doubt in how long it would last. So I gotta say the LG G3 definitely does very well in the battery category and I'm simply impressed. On the Samsung Galaxy S5, you also have a pretty large battery, and I will also say that it very easily did make it through a day. However, from my normal usage of both of these devices, I will say that the LG G3 did make it a little bit further. But one thing that really separates the Samsung Galaxy S5 is its ultra power saving mode, which can have your device last for days and days if you need it to and still allow you to access some of your crucial features such as calling, internet, and stuff like that, and it cheaps up by taking you through another menu, which is literally all the things you need on one page, um, very basic settings. It actually turns off the color, raises the brightness very low, so it pretty much turns off all resources, allowing you to only access your critical settings. On the LG G3, it ships with wireless charging capability. As you can see, it is built into the back of the back piece. And on the S5, you can also achieve that. However, you will need to purchase a separate back piece cover with the wireless charging capability, which may add a very, very small amount of bulk. So now moving on to the benchmark scores, so let's just make this very very fast. Both these devices do have flagship specs and they perform amazingly, so I really feel that the benchmarks really don't reflect the actual performance of these two devices when compared. Like I said, both these devices do have Snapdragon 801 processors clocked in at 2.5 GHz and are quad core, and the LG G3 has 3 gigs of RAM, my model here has 2 gigs of RAM since it is an international variant. But in Geekbench, the S5 came in at 2925 and the LG G3 came in at 2149 in the multi-core tests. In the anti 2 benchmark, the LG G3 came in at 30,918 while the Samsung Galaxy S5 came in at 36,099. And once again, although we are seeing kind of a gap in the benchmark scores, I'm kind of suspicious of it as these devices literally have the exact same specs and in the past Samsung has been talked about to raise their benchmark scores. When it came to the Quadrant Standard Benchmark, the LG G3 came in at 23,000 while the Samsung Galaxy S5 came in at about 24,000, so in that test it was pretty close. The last test we ran was the 3D Mark, which pretty much tests the GPU performance and the graphics handling of a certain device. The Samsung Galaxy S5 came in in the 18,000s, while the LG G3 came in at the 14,000s. 
but I will tell you in this very quick benchmark run through that both these devices perform pretty much identical as they do have the same specs and it kind of baffles me how big of a difference there were in some benchmark tests. So in most cases they are pretty much left to be disregarded in this comparison. So now down to the final verdict, as you can see we did test the LG G3 and the Samsung Galaxy S5, put it through its paces, and finally it's time to give you my final impressions. And I will tell you as a disclaimer that it really comes down to the individual user and it comes down to personal preference most of all, which device will make you happier for your hard earned money. But from my point of view, I definitely preferred the LG G3. I found the Samsung Galaxy S5 not to be the prettiest phone out in the market, and aesthetics are very important to me, and I never really need the IP67 certification. Although it is nice, I found that the port cover wasn't really a nice sacrifice, at least in my situation. That being said, it has a fingerprint sensor for those who may like it, and some people may not want such a big screen, but at the same time, you also have the ultra power saving mode, which is extremely handy, and also a very nice camera. On the LG G3, however, there are just so many things to like about it, especially that Quad HD display that a lot of people seem to be talking about, and I also think that they have done a very good job in the design. The device itself has a thin bezel, very seamless edges, and it's very comfortable to hold. And also the laser autofocus in the camera mode and also the fact that the back is very well executed. Although it is made out of plastic, to be honest I really have no complaints as it definitely looks like metal and the device still feels extremely solid while remaining very light and able to remove the back. But aside from that I hope you all enjoyed this video and let me know which device you prefer after seeing this comparison and which one you plan on picking up. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like button as it definitely helps me out a bunch and subscribe for some future coverage as I will be comparing this device with many more and more devices coming up. I'll see you all in the next video.